Quick disclaimer before we begin. This podcast is intended to inspire and motivate you based on real events. This is a safe space and a no judgment zone. Let's build our tribe. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For your kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Dear Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us another chance at life to seek your glory. Thank you for blessing me with the confidence to share my thoughts, the wisdom for the right words to say, and allowing my story to be a light in someone's life. Thank you for blessing us with a roof over our head, clothes on our backs, and the ability to see, hear, and walk. I pray that you cover my listeners and open their minds to help understand themselves better. Dear Lord, I pray that you bless them with the wisdom, the courage, the consistency, and the persistency to keep going. I pray that you meet every need according to your will and purpose. Heal the sick and continue to guide our ways. Dear Lord, I pray that you blanket this world with peace. I pray that you remove any doubt from our minds that the enemy is using to cloud our judgment by walking in a journey of seeking you. Dear Lord, you get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. You are worthy in all you do and continue to do in our lives. And for that, I am grateful. Dear Lord, this is your day and we will rejoice and be glad in it. When two or three is gathered, you are in the midst. Dear Lord, only you know the plans you have for us, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, plans to give us hope in a future. Dear Lord, you are the lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Make any crooked ways straight. Dear Lord, you said ask and we shall receive Seek and we shall find, knock and the door shall be open. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Happy Monday, Naked Family. Thank you for tuning back into another episode. I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Your victory is tied to your voice. In Mark chapter 9, verse 17, a mother brought Jesus to her son to cast out the demons that wouldn't allow him to speak. It made him mute. I was listening to Pastor Mike Jr. about this verse and he made a point when he stated that the demon had the boy on mute. Because had he not been on mute, he would not have been able to speak to it. That's what the enemy does to us. He wants us to be mute about our freedom. Our freedom is in the tongue. Our freedom is in belief. Our words are our weapons. The enemy wants us deaf and mute to remove the resources of seeking God. Jesus also describes himself as the true vine that gives life to everything connected to him. The father is described as a meticulous gardener who carefully tends to humanity and the individual soul. This entire scripture is comforting because in John chapter 15, verse 7, it says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you and you will bear much fruit. Being aware of verse 2, Jesus also says, The Father cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit can be more fruitful. For instance, getting rid of all pride, insecurities, or anything else you're battling that may be getting in the way of replacing God's words with positivity. Allow God to break you to reposition you. In Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Meaning what we believe about ourselves, good or bad, we are. Which is why choosing the words we speak over ourselves is so important. People only act in accordance to what they believe about themselves. In Mark chapter 3 verse 27 says, If you're going to go into a strong man's house, you have to first bind the strong man before you can take the goods. Meaning salvation can't take place without binding the enemy. As Henry Ford would say, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Behavior doesn't predict belief. Belief predicts behavior. Relying on the identity God has given us rather than how we feel about ourselves. Insecurities lead to assumptions and false conclusions. I was reading something that said making assumptions about what you feel others think or feel about you is literally like drawing thought bubbles above everyone's head and assuming what they think. We are wrong. 
And we need to stop overthinking because that's the trick of the enemy. God will strip you of everything so that it's just you and him. It's time to stop letting your insecurities paralyze you. Stop flirting with your past by allowing negative thoughts of old situations cloud your mind and have tunnel vision towards the future God has already mapped out for you. But don't let it take over to the point that you're not living in the now because you'll be living in the future. I was listening to Sarah Jakes and she said something that stuck with me. She said, we need to just live in the moment and enjoy the journey and the process. We don't need to stress about our future when it's already written. How and what we need to do to get there is not in our control. Remaining focused on the task at hand is what's important. There's always a disconnect between God's promise and what our current situation is. But faith fills the gap. Faith closes the disconnection between his promise and our present. Faith is the anchor that keeps worry, doubt, anxiety, fear from our boat sinking. The key to find contentment in a season of transition is to focus your mind on everything God has already rescued you from. Focusing more on what you need to do will pull you from what God has already done. Meditate on his promised words and you will regain your power. You will regain your strength. The enemy lies sometimes not using his words, but he lies sometimes manipulating God's word, which is what he did when Jesus was fasting. For example, the enemy took scripture and tried to get Jesus to misapply scripture, like when he was telling Jesus to jump off the ledge, and Jesus always had a comeback for each lie. What I want you to take from this message today is, the weapon that the enemy uses most to deceive is God's word. I'm going to close today's message out with a prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that today's message falls upon good soil and that the lost comes home. Dear Lord, I pray that you plant a seed of hope and that their ears be open and stirred up of good faith. Dear Lord, you said you would never leave or forsake us. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and can do all things exceedingly and abundantly. So it is, it is so. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for tuning back into another episode. Please be sure to follow me on all platforms at It's Quadisha, and that's spelled out I-T-S-Q-U-A-D-E-S-H-A. My brand at Naked Body and Skincare, the podcast at My Fearless Mindset for all updates, and my YouTube channel, Quadisha D. If you want to support my brand, use code FAIRLESS23 for 20% off. And don't forget to tune back into another episode next Monday. If you have any testimonies or questions you'd like me to share on my podcast, please don't hesitate to email me at fearlessminds.23 at gmail.com. Thank you in advance for your continued support. And always remember to walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you.